Welcome, adventurers. Here's what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Handily vanquishing the library's guard dogs, the party hits another roadblock when they find that Alomar has returned to his study. Seeking another way out, they return to the shelves of books and find a hidden compartment that contains what the party believes to be Alomar's elixir. Still lacking an exit, Falzern teleports himself and Shakara out of the secret chamber, where they can alert Geneva to Alomar's activities. She distracts the Elder Elf and draws him away so the rest of the party can escape, retreating out of the city to take refuge on the Rising Three. And now, on with the show. I want to record my message to Campbell. All is not as it seemed. I have many questions and no answers. We may have made a rash decision. I hope to know more soon. All my love, Shakara. After no more than 30 seconds, you get a reply. Ah, oh, Shikara! I, I do not know. I, I don't know what you mean, but this black goo is coming along quite nicely. I think I have unlocked a key, and it cuts off. <laughs> so you all will benefit from a long rest. You're safely tucked into the Rising Three, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. But before you do actually get to sleep. I, I imagine you want to look over some of some of these books that you've you've pilfered from the the great wizard Alamar, who is up to d- nothing but good and respectful practices. Is that what you're calling it? It's up for interpretation, I think. Um, yeah, Falsey definitely um, is going to be spending as much time as he can going over these books. Mia loves books. Mia loves books. She said it before. So which one of these books tells us where he's going to be turning himself into a lich? Which one yeah. tells us how to kill Alamar? <laughs> so f- which book tells us where the ceremony takes place? So I think Falsey, given that there is pages torn out and this, this surreptitious book, surreptitious practice of the devout, um, I think he's going to start with that one. Okay. See if he can figure out anything in there about this ritual that is going to turn Alamar into a lich or this kraken and any of this stuff. Falsey's a speed reader too from all of the time he spent in the oh, library. Oh, of course. So. How convenient. So in the book that you've chosen there, Falzer, the entirety of the book is not about Quelakina. It is an, a, a collection of different types of rituals. Uh, many of them are just rituals of worship. Uh, more like, uh, almost like superstitions. Like offering... Um, tribute, uh, whether that be some type of trinket, or or maybe higher up on the scale as far as like an animal sacrifice. Uh, a few of them are in, in a, an assortment of different languages as well, like a, a, as well abyssal and primordial. Uh, there's one in Terran. A few of which maybe falls in and understands. Many of which you will not, of course. Uh, there are other rituals that are also in Sylvan, much like the. Uh, entry about Kralakina that Shakara was able to comprehend under the effects of her spell. But there is no other information about specifically Kralakina in what you can read and understand. Okay. And and once again, there's some pages that were torn out. Yes, there's very clearly denoted a second part to this reawakening ritual that is torn from this book. And nothing about liches, nothing about... No, nothing like that. All right. I think given um, Falzern's recent uh, discussion with Izzy, he probably will next dig into Pax and worship. Well, while you're reading Surreptitious, what is everyone else doing? What language is Pax and worship in? Uh, Common. I would like to glance through that one. And Mia? I would like to investigate gods and their machinations. So I, f- I found the page that was folded over, but I want to just look into it more. Sure. And Shaft, are you looking at anything? Nope, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> okay. Hey, you guys wake me up when you figure something out. So Mia, uh, as I had said before, a lot of what is in this book is, is are, are stories you've read before. And 
this entire book isn't specifically about Thor, but it is about a variety of celestial beings uh, across many different types of pantheons. But of course, where you saw the the uh, extended family tree that was earmarked, uh, and kind of flipping back to that passage, you see that even after uh, the family tree, the passage further continues and outlines uh, a few things that you have never seen before in a text on Thor. What you are familiar with, of course, is the the plot of Thor's son and wife against him, Talos and Talena, respectively, to usurp the god of thunder's power and title, and how Thor, with the help of his daughter, Exna, the goddess of divinity, using her future sight abilities, she foresaw Thor's death by Talos's hand and was able to warn Thor about this murderous plot. Uh, this unwarning, unfortunately, did not show her own death by Talena's hand. Thor's wife and mother of Exna killed both her and Bios, their other, their third child. It ultimately culminated in Thor defeating his son and wife in combat, slaying them both. And the additional passage outlines, like the tree and the changes to the tree, precluded that Talos and Talena were having an incestuous relationship, and that it may be that they were in fact not slain by Thor, as many normal texts would, would state. But Exna and the other daughter were, for sure? That's what the book says, yes. So I grew up hearing that he killed Talena and Talos. That's correct, yeah. Hmm. It doesn't really say, like, where they would have lived or, like, their story or at all. Just suggests that they might have been alive. It's very vague, and it's completely contradictory to the normal story, of course. It states that Thor, in his moment of triumph over both of them, was unable to deal the killing blow through whether or not his own, his own remorse or his own inability to, to kill his wife and child. He in, in, instead imprisoned them. And it, it unfortunately does not stay, say where or how. It is very big. Okay. So I think um, Falsey would say that, you know, there, there wasn't much that he was able to glean from this book that he read, although there, there were some passages in languages that he can't read. Um, and then would, would ask um, Shikara and Mia if there was anything of note that they came across. Well, Falzerin, I, I don't know what to think. This is very different than what I grew up learning. The, I don't know. Okay, well, if if you don't want to talk about it right now, I guess I guess that's fine. Um, is, is any of it pertinent to our current situation? Oh no, definitely not. It's just very confusing, and yeah, I don't know. Okay. Shakara in Paxson Worship, which at the same time you are reading through this, you find that th this book it, it outlines and documents anecdotal writings and, and accounts of people's experiences in general with patrons and forming packs with all manner of, of powerful beings. One, one section kind of dr uh, draws your eye and, and, and stops you. It's this excerpt from the journal of Tid Leewinks. <laughs> and it reads... How'd you come up with that name? It was very difficult. It took me many hours of brainstorming to... <laughs> <laughs> it reads, When agreeing to a pact or some kind of promise of power, it is important for the individual to acquire as much information as possible about their potential patron. That is, of course assuming that this individual is intending to utilize the power gained for any means other than the intentions of their potential patron. One will usually find that their patron does not deal in whole or even partial truths. Signing on the dotted line, as it were, leaves its mark on the individual, sometimes physically but always metaphysically, 
spiritually. In the event that one has the desire or need to break this internal bond, there are only two hardships by which to do so. Number one, killing the patron in question will sever all ties to them, eliminating their hold on you and relinquishing you of all bestowed powers. It is noted that this task is often considered impossible, depending on the patron, and not always a sure thing, as many of these beings that offer patronage are patrons of even greater powers themselves. One may find themselves chained to a new, more malevolent master. And the second reads, The ritual of catharsis can be performed in an attempt to sever your patron's connection. It is an incredibly challenging undertaking, achievable and survivable by only the strongest of will. The metaphysical and any physical tethers must be disconnected. To deal with the metaphysical, a potion must be created and consumed, and it lists only two ingredients, phlogiston and the blood of a celestial. To deal with the physical, Whatever form this physical attachment takes, it must be destroyed quickly after consuming the metaphysical potion. In this brief window, the physical connection will be vulnerable and be able to be destroyed by normal means. Note that the fallout from both of these actions will take a severe toll on one's body. And that is the end of that passage. What was the first of the two ingredients again? Phlogiston. You can, Shakar, you can do uh, an arcana check. See if you recognize it if you like. 17. You have never heard of phlogiston before. Fulzerin, do you know what a phlogiston is? Fulzy, you can roll me, and anyone in earshot, of course, could also roll an arcana check. It's an adjusted 20. 13 for Mia. Neither Fulzerin nor Mia have heard of phlogiston before. Uh, uh, no, that doesn't really ring a bell, Shikaro. Why do you ask? There is a way to break a pact. Break a pact? Two ways, actually. The first would be to kill the patron. Would you say that Isabella would be described by that word? Well, Shikara. I, I know our relationship has been very strained, and you have very little trust for me, and, and in fact, it, it appears a lot of suspicions about my uh, my true nature. Um, and that's that's part of the reason I, ha I haven't brought up this subject before, because it, it, it sounds bad uh, on first pass, but... Falzern, just tell us what you're trying to say. Suffice it to say... I was in a life or death situation where I was captured and I was captured by a beast that Isabella was controlling that took me to a lair where I was strapped down and completely oh powerless to do anything to save myself. This was Isabella's doing and for reasons I'm still not completely sure of, she saw something in me and gave me an ultimatum, either death, and she sap all of my life force out of me and, and my magical ability, or I agree to a pact with her and be subject to running the occasional errand for her, more or less. Isn't Izzy bad? Well... Remember the journal? I know. I, I am certainly... Uh, over the past 24 hours, much, much more concerned about this situation I have found myself in with Isabella. But at the time, uh, once again, I'll, I'll say it was a life or death situation. And I didn't know much about her at the time as well. So, so I, 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 I did what I think anyone would do, which was uh, agree to her terms. And the errand that she wanted me to complete for her was to... Uh, get her sister to agree to leave this group that she's in and I if I was able to do that I could take her sister's place and and as a bonus 
I could maybe get some extra magic, which, which you know is something that I'm interested in, but... Do choices made in ignorance excuse the decision? Uh, that's a great philosophical question, uh, Shakara. The, the problem is that it, not only was there ignorance at play, but uh, I was also completely defenseless and going to be killed, essentially. Now, I, I appreciate that, that you have a very high standard for your actions, but... Mm, I, 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 I care not about your situation. Your decision was made, and truthfully, it was the correct one. Well, I, I appreciate that you're able to see my perspective. What I was going to say is that I, I have respect for the standards that you try to uphold and the... I, I do the, not want to talk I, about my standards right now. Okay. Okay. This book says there are two ways to break a pact. Well, that that's certainly something I'm going to need to read up on because I'm... Is there an easier way? I'm very worried about, about this Isabella situation. She has already used some of her powers to, to demonstrate how she can wound me from a distance. What? And, yes. What do you mean? I, I don't even, I'm not even sure what more she could potentially do. It. She, she could strike me down at any time for all I know. How, what happened? You're wounded? She is a powerful being and she, she, through this connection, has some power over me, it would appear. I don't know what I would have done if I were you. Why did she wound you? She thinks that her sister is still alive. Erica. But Tolstoff said... I I know. It, it, it really looked like she'd been killed. So you did not do what your patron asked of you, and she retaliated. That's what she's claiming. And she was clear in what she wanted done. Her instructions were to have Erica removed from their little group by however means necessary. I, I initially asked Erica to step out um, of their group because she was no longer welcome, to which she declined. A fight broke out, and the rest is history. So you fear for your life if you do not do as your patron asks? Yes, I do. And at this point, as as tempting as it was to, to see what extra magic I might get out of this relationship, given the most more recent revelations, I, I would be happy to read about a way to get out of this. What if she asked you to do something that you completely did not agree with or were very confused about the correct course of action. What if she told you Shaft was evil and asked you to dispatch him? What would you do? Well, knowing what I know now about Isabella, which is that from all the evidence I've seen, it, it seems she has She's involved with some bad things. But she has done good also, has she not? She is not... She did say she would help us take down the Kraken. That is not what she told me. Oh, she really backed us up in there in the meeting with the elders, remember, Shakar? I, I think you were seeing a, a false side of Isabella. I don't know, I'm just telling you what I saw. If I were told that Shaft were evil and needed to be dealt with, I would first feel an obligation to to prove that that is true before I would take any action against a person who I have originally had seen plenty of evidence to show is, is a good person deep down. What if all information you received was conflicting? There was no clear answer. That's very challenging and, and I, I think in that case I would... I would feel that 
no action is, is the best course of action until I could be certain. And if Isabella confronted you and forced a decision? I don't know. I don't know, Shakara. Is this about the higher power that contacted you, Shakara? The book says you can dispatch your patron, but that the patron usually has a patron of their own, which is much, much stronger. And is not a recommended course of action. <sighs> well, that's that's certainly not good news. What's What's option B? The ritual of catharsis. We need a phlogiston and the blood of a celestial. Blood of a celestial? Do we know any celestials? I'm a celestial. You are, and Asimara is a celestial. But do I have to be dead, or can it just be like, you know, a donation? It does not specify. Well, let's hope it's a donation. <laughs> <laughs> I can only give blood once a month, though, so I have to save one of you first, and then wait a month. I certainly wouldn't put your life on the line for this, Mia. You, you've done nothing to deserve that. Agreed. I could shed a little blood if it's just a drop of blood. No big deal. Well, this is, I guess, good news. Along with some bad news. Uh-oh. More bad news? Well, I, I mean, the first option of, of I was starting to consider dealing with Izzy myself and, and seeing if it would be possible to to take her out. That does seem like a losing. Yes, especially if, if she may be linked to a even more powerful being. And Isabella is already powerful in, in her own right, as far as I know. What what do we do next? I guess we have some more books here that we can read. Does that other book say anything about the ritual of catharsis? I didn't read anything in the book that I read about that. I certainly I wasn't looking for that, um, and and maybe could have glossed over it, but I, I don't recall reading anything about it. Now, Shakara, are you in some kind of trouble? You seem very... conflicted. I am. I may have made a rash decision. <gasps> what happened, Shikara? You can trust us. It is something between Campbell and I. There is a lot to tell. For now, I will say... We may be in over our heads. Well, Shakara, I I don't want to pressure you to to dis disclose anything that you're not comfortable disclosing, but Well I do. No one tells me anything around here. Falzer and I still do not know how I feel about you. I have been told and shown visions. All I can tell you is what I know and I I've I've been pretty forthcoming with you thus far, and I will continue to be it, it, it's a bit challenging, I'll be honest. It's difficult to be forthcoming with someone who has has so much hostility and, and lack of trust. Do I need to zone of truth you guys again? No. <laughs> Does the name Dendar mean anything to either of you? Ooh, Dendar? You can both roll a uh, history check, please. 25. 15. Okay, so a, a 15 or higher um, will... Yeah, the, the name Dendar is familiar to uh, to Mia. And unfortunately not falls or even though with your higher role, just because of the, uh, the type of information that has been available to you for half of your life in Heracleon. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a uh, blind spot. But Mia, uh, again, being in the life of higher powers, despite being, of course, focused solely on Thor and worship of your god, there's still many pantheons uh, in which you are familiar with or have surface knowledge of. And you, you, you do recognize the name Dendar. Uh, you are not entirely sure what exactly or who Dendar is, but you do know that 
Dendar is not a god in the sense that Thor is a god. Falzarin, you claim to be a good person. Do you feel the power that Isabella has given you, though mayhaps came from evil, could be used for good? Well, Shakara, these past couple weeks have certainly put me in some situations where I've had to maybe do some things that I am not proud of, and I've had to question the type of person that I am. But, but ultimately, at the end of the day, I I do try to do the good, the good thing and and the right thing. And I had hoped that Isabella may have some redeeming qualities. I don't know. After new information that's come to light about her intents, I don't. I think she's evil. And the power imbalance between in our relationship means that I, I'm going to be held to do whatever she wants me to do. You are concerned she will force you to do evil. Yes, I am. She told me that when I requested her help for this, um, with dealing with this Kraken, she seemed unconcerned about it. And when I said that it has, it's bent on destroying um, civilization and and any any bit of mankind, more or less, she didn't seem to care about that at all. Are we talking about the same Isabella? She backed me up in there. She said she'd help. Trust me, there's another side to Isabella. Both physically, which you have not seen, and ethically. She's She's got some opinions that only come out in certain circumstances. Well, I mean, working with Alamar, I hate that guy. She's got to be evil. And falls her and, like, puts his hand up for a high five. <laughs> And I pound it with my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Almar is the worst. I agree, Mia. He's the worst. And seeing that those two are working closely together, it just it's another it's another piece of evidence that makes me very, very weary of Isabella's intents. Okay, so speaking of Almar. Where is this ritual going to take place tomorrow? This ceremony? we got to try to figure it out and stop them. Yes, I, I think while we've got some time, we might as well continue reading. And if we can't find anything out, perhaps Geneva can offer some advice. So there are still a few more books uh, to go through, if you so wish. Sure, let's yeah, do it. definitely. Let's do the Cosmos. Let's read Cosmopolitan. All right, so Falzern, what what uh, what are you grabbing right now then? Does it tell me how to have a better sex life? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what am I? I'm reading the cosmology of the prime material plane. Yeah, so if, if Mia's going to read that one, I, uh, the only one left, I think, is the... Um, There's notable beings of the cosmos, and there is the rest of Alamar's journal. Falzern, I cannot read the journal. Shall we switch? Okay. Yes, Alamar's journal is in Elvish. Shakara, you see that unlike some of these other books, uh, this one actually has like a table of contents. And basically it has a, a, about four or five different sections of, of various... It just kind of lists a name. Uh, it reads uh, Illithid, Thrykreen, Scro, Gif, and the last is Niogi. A name which you are now familiar with, getting a bit of information from, from Mia. Okay, so I'll read down through that and I'll go, Mia, it mentions Niogi. And I'll flip to that page. What? No way! And it it seems to be, uh, yeah, basically uh, encyclopedic knowledge of this race. And it kind of it describes uh, these, these creatures are slave traders by nature. Their culture dictates... Everything is either a slave or an owner. There is no gray between the two. Uh, a single Niogi may have dozens of slaves, though it is taxing mentally for them to maintain those higher numbers. And uh, Niogi slaves are often marked by a tattoo. Though they appear quite similar to the unacquainted, each tattoo is unique to an individual Niogi. 
And it continues speaking about their, their home world. It's very, even though it's written in common, it's very difficult to pronounce or even really read. It, the, you can make out, the best you can really sound it out is Kajiks. And this home world was lost to the Neogi millennia ago. It seems their, their own hubris has caused their downfall. The Neogi have since been relegated to a phlogiston faring species, latching on to worlds and reaping them of their inhabitants adding to their growing slave workforce to either battle with or distance themselves from the great threat. And it then gets into describing this great threat or the nameless ones. They were created by the Niyogi in an attempt to produce the perfect slave. They created this amorphous, shape-shifting species to be able to adapt to any task or goal the controlling Niyogi would need accomplished. These nameless ones, they, they proved uncontrollable by the Niyogi slave masters, and they overthrew them, driving the Niyogi from their own planet. And now they ceaselessly pursue the Niyogi across planes and planets alike, bent on exterminating them. And there is, of course, more information about uh, like their, their, some of their abilities and their spawning habits, all of which, you know, you, again... Now you have the information, much like some of the Kraken stuff and some of the Triton stuff. Uh, when it becomes pertinent to be able to recall, your character will be able to recall it. Okay. We just need to find some of these nameless ones. Did you share all that information yeah. with me? Yeah. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah. Nameless ones were mentioned when I when I met a Niyogi. Interesting. Yeah, they said they were kicked off their planet, so I mean, I guess he wasn't lying. Mia, in your volume, Cosmology of the Prime Material Plane, you open it, uh, immediately you're met by a, a, a picture. Okay. So this picture, immediately as you open it, basically it's like the, the first page inside of it. it. has this big title, Planar Geography depicts a very loose, like, artist rendition of, of something that's kind of foreign to you. Uh, it, it shows basically, uh, it's kind of this map is divided into two sections and they're colored a little differently between the two. Mm -hmm. One is labeled the prime material plane and the other is labeled the deep ethereal. Within the both of these sections, there are what look like planetary bodies some of them are, are labeled, uh, they're basically just labeled as worlds. And in the area around them, surrounding them, is labeled as phlogiston. Shakara, look at this, look at this. Phlogiston! It's right there! What is this? It looks like phlogiston surrounds the prime material plane. So, how do we get some? A spaceship. A spaceship. A spaceship. The Niyogi. We get it from the Niyogi. They don't seem to be the type that would just hand it over. But they do have a, like a ship thing that can fly. They, they must if, if they originate from somewhere else, another planetary body. For real, I don't know how to get it. I, like... When you cross planes, are you in phlogiston and you can just reach out and grab it? I, I have no idea. Do we contain it in something? I do not understand. Me either. My brain kind of hurts. <sighs> we, we've got a lot to think about, and I, I think this is... None of this is going to happen today. We've got more pressing matters, but it, I'm glad that we need to keep these books, and I'm glad that we've We've got some more material to help solve some of our problems. Mia, when you send your message to Geneva, mm -hmm. mayhaps you can ask her about the phlogiston. She may have information for us. Sure, I can only send, you know, 25 words, exactly. So, we'll have to be sure we fit it. I think we probably just need to find a way to be able to meet her more secretively so that we don't run into Alamar or Isabella and then we can go from there 
Okay, maybe we can ask her later. She could meet us here on the Rising Three. Yeah, that's a good idea. You can't miss it. How much how much time would have elapsed, do you think? Uh, probably days? a couple of hours. Like, are we, we're sort of still like middle of the night. Was that everything in the book no, for me? No, do you continue to... I mean, you kind of just open oh, the cover and that's all you've done. Sure. I mean... First page is all we need. I am. I opened it up to the cover picture and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Shut the book. <laughs> I mean, I have learned that with Leland, you gotta, you gotta keep probing <laughs> you gotta for answers here. keep prodding a little bit, that's right. All right, so what else do I So learn? this book kind of uh, outlines and describes sections of uh, the prime material plane. It states that many worlds exist within it, each of them designated as their own planetary system, housed in a crystal sphere or crystal shell. And you you find another diagram a few pages in, actually. Ooh. And it tells us exactly how to get the flodrishersen. <laughs> and this diagram is is very this diagram is very crude, and. It's basically ha- it depicts two circles, one smaller within a, within uh, a larger one. You see that it's actually been colored, kind of this rainbow hue around the the largest circle, of which the outside is labeled as the phlogiston. And in between the, these two circles is labeled wild space. The smallest circle labeled as a planet, and the outer circle labeled as the crystal shell and it further breaks down and describes these these items in this book the crystal shell it's seemingly constructed of a dark ceramic material the shell wall is said to be impervious to damage by normal or magical means it separates the wild space from the phlogiston passage through the crystal sphere is achieved by using a portal opening in the crystal wall These appear unpredictably and sporadically. Very few spells have ever been known to be able to locate and predict these portals. They are said to be lost to time. The wild space is the area outside of a planet's atmosphere. Depending on the size of the planet, gravity may persist in the wild space, but it is not common. Many strange creatures exist in the wild space and are able to withstand and even thrive in the conditions. The phlogiston, also referred to as the flow or the rainbow ocean. The phlogiston refers to the space outside of the crystal sphere and to a volatile, chaotic, flammable, rainbow-colored material. If one were to travel from world to world, they would do so by means of a phlogiston flow or trail. It is said that the gods have no power in the phlogiston. It is said that uh, a crystal sphere around a planet, uh, a planetoid, kind of enhances the uh, a certain pantheon's power within it. And stepping outside of those bounds, uh, depending on the power of the deity itself or being itself, very severely hampers the reach of that being's power. Falzrin, in Alamar's journal. You find, again, uh, fairly quickly leafing through it. There, there actually aren't very many passages in it. Uh, it, it's, it, it. The book itself is quite small as well, right? It's nowhere near the size of these larger uh, tomes that you, you've pilfered from Alamar's library. But the, the majority of it kind of details uh, a few day-to-day goings on, uh, you know, as far as writing the keeping stuff. But every, you know, sporadic entry there are details about achieving this lichdom and it it outlines how Alamar personally invited many wizards to the keep to speak with him and consult with him and how he he used them and experimented on them and how these experiments uh, often failed or, or went awry and he it seems in the beginning had had a lot of trouble perfecting the 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 construction of a phylactery and actually you, you kind of uh, see a few in, in some of these passages it notes uh, some of the items that he's used which correlates to some of the items in which he found on that bookshelf uh, and how that n- none of them he seemed were suitable for his own means 
So um, you said that a lot of the items that he'd used were things that were on the bookshelf? Yeah, it specifically notes the the urn and the crystal uh, bottle with the dropper um, that you actually took. Just It seems that he had yet to find his item. Like the item mm. that he would use as his phylactery. Nothing else of note in there. There's again, it just it goes into like details about what he's done to these some of these wizards, uh, wizards that you you've certainly recognized a few names like renowned wizards. What was what's the outcome uh, uh, for these wizards? Were they killed or he failed to he failed to impart any type of actual intelligence to these undead, now undead wizards. Can I speak out of roleplay real quick? A lich's phylactery per uh, Forgotten Realms Realms wiki says it's typically a sealed metal box. Does that, like... It can be anything. It can literally be anything. Okay, so it has nothing to do with the cubes of metal. Okay. Well, even if it did, there's nothing that alluded to that or... No, none of your characters would probably put that together. Exactly. No. We we wouldn't put that together. No, like with Falzern's knowledge of it, no. Like literally it can it can be anything. Usually it's something that can be meaningful to the, the lich itself, right? And have some type of, of connection. Which could be, it could explain why Alamar is having trouble finding something that's suitable. Because he has no heart and nothing has meaning to him. Oh. What would mean He's something a terrible to him? person. The head of Falzerin is going to become. <laughs> yes. Because it means something to him. He needs you on a spear. Guys, this is this is terrible. It, it looks like those undead that that we came across. Those were some very noteworthy wizards in in the wizarding community that that Alamar had been experimenting on. Wait, the ones I killed. Whatever you killed, they they weren't they weren't the things that they used to be. Well, yeah, that's why I killed them. But that's you laid them to rest. I laid them to rest. That's a tragedy. Wow. He's he's been experimenting, trying to come up with a, a way to make his phylactery, which is which is a way to help him achieve lichdom and store his soul so that he can be immortal. Should his body be killed, he can fall back on this phylactery as a means to keep him alive and create a new body. Do you think he's gonna know? Geneva? What about Geneva? Is he gonna turn her into a zombie like the rest of them? I don't know. He's He's been experimenting and it, it, it seems like he he has an idea of, of how to accomplish this and I mean, tonight's the night. He's He's going to try it. You mean tomorrow night? Right. Well, I mean, today's pretty much over, but yes. Yeah, I mean, it's after midnight, I guess, technically. Um, okay, well, I need to... I can't talk to Geneva yet. I need to practice. Th- that's fine. We can contact her in the morning, once she'd be awake. We need to tell Shaft all of this as soon as he wakes up. I, I agree. He needs to know what's going on. Should we not just wake him now? Well, I'm not sure it'll make any difference. Shaft, Shaft doesn't like to be woken. We can tell him in the morning. Yeah, aren't we all ready to go to bed? I'm pretty tired. <sighs> well, yes, I am tired, but this is precious time that, that I want to spend reading as much as I can. So if you, if you feel like you want to head off to bed, Mia, that's fine. But I'm going to keep reading. I think so. I'll just review my spells before bed, but I'm, I'm exhausted. Shikara, are you also retiring for the night? I think I will read a little longer as well. And those that are continuing to read for what, maybe another hour or two, maybe, I don't, I'm not sure. Falzerin, if you're, if you're continuing to leaf through Alamar's journal, you, you do gain more insight into why he wants to achieve becoming a, a lich. And... It's all, you know, it's very vague and obviously as if he's speaking to himself, right? So he obviously has a lot of knowledge that he doesn't need to write into this journal because, you know, he references a lot of known uh, subjects. 
but you you do you do understand that uh, he he is the last of his elven line and it briefly mentions uh, some of his very powerful ancestors and how those ancestors the the good they did and, and how they came to really uh, found Heracleon and, and why and the reasons why and it's very clear that Alamar feels like this is his way the way that he can persist despite being a long lived elf he is already quite aged and with no successors to Heracleon or even his name this is this will be his legacy Shakara which uh which book are you continuing with is there one specifically that you'd like to uh I'm not I'm just kind of looking at the page waiting for Falzerin to kind of take a break in his reading Falzerin there is something I must show you and I will pull the cuff off my right arm and show you there is a blue brand on my arm. Falzer, you you recognize this brand as it is in the shape of a serpent ending in a dragon's head. And even in the dim torchlight in the bottom of this boat, it shimmers blue. You immediately recognize this to be a symbol that was sported on Keck's loot. Shakara, what What's the meaning of this? What does that symbol signify? Campbell found a box. A very pretty sapphire box. And keys. And we opened the box. And it was full of wondrous items. And I was shown a vision. Multiple visions. One of which involved you and Brendel conspiring together as deep scions. Campbell and I branded ourselves and made a pact with Dendar, the Serpent Mother. We may have rushed into this decision She has given me power. She has given me wonderful items. She has done the same for Campbell. Her only ask of me thus far has been you. I see. Fulzern, as Shakar is saying this, it's almost as if it materializes this blue ring on her finger that again the the band of it is the body of a serpent and where a, where a jewel would be set is the head of a dragon well shikara this is certainly i didn't expect this but i think there's a lot going on behind the scenes in aspara and i, I wonder if this has something to do with isabella because Isabella told me that there would be someone else who would be enlisted to try and complete what I couldn't. And and maybe Isabella has some connection with Dendar. I, I don't know. I asked Isabella about it. She said she knew of Dendar, but did not seem connected. And it, no mention of Erica has been made, if that is what you refer to well i i think we're both in in dangerous situations with these packs we've fallen into and do not you believe that this power could be used for good i thought the same about the power that i had had gotten from isabella and about the additional powers she'd promised do you feel different do you feel evil? I don't, no. But the thing that scares me is the power that she holds over me. She she has 
I don't know. I don't know what the extent is that she can do to me, but she's already shown that she can injure me from a distance. Just just by making use of this pact between us. And that scares me. What what if the next thing that she demands I do, like you said, is 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 evil and I am in a position where I refuse to do it and she strikes me down. Dandar may not have wished your death. It is not completely clear to me. Though Keck did seem to believe that was the desired outcome. I I still don't understand how Keck fits into all this. How- Keck has also been helped by Dandar. Keck was born mute. Dendar gave her the ability to sing. Dendar gave her the lute. Dendar helped Keck. Well, Shikara, I think, I think these packs that, the more that I learn about my pact with Isabella and and also now this pact that can we, can we not call it an alliance? Sure, an alliance. I think they often have the potential for misuse by the higher power in the pact and I, I think that's probably what we're both being subject to Dendar has not spoken to me since that first night well Isabella has contacted me very infrequently as well and in fact when I most recently spoke to her it was only because I initiated contact with her but she gave me an ultimatum that I finish the job with Erica or else and had told me that she was going to enlist someone else to also uh, try to deal with Erica and that I should be careful because this person may feel the need to kill me in the process. Why does Isabella seek Erica's removal? I have no idea. I initially was under the impression that Erica was the weaker of the two and perhaps in in this group that Isabella is part of, they, they wanted to get rid of a weaker link, and Isabella saw some power in me and, and saw that it, I would be a good fit to replace Erica, but I'm, I'm not sure that that's the case. I, I think Erica may actually be more powerful than Isabella, and if that's the case, then why would she want to... I, I don't understand. Isabella... Mentioned that Erica was stronger than she. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, Shakara. I, I certainly have a bad feeling about these alliances, though I... If there's one thing about me that you should know, it's that I always seek to learn more about magic and, and to acquire more magic, and that has been a driving force for me for a long time. So certainly an alliance with Isabella that offers more magic is something that's very appealing to me and and I I typically try to use my magic for good but the power imbalance in the in these alliances is is what scares me I want to show you the items that Dendar has given me and I'll show you the ring it does not come off oh that's that's a bit worrisome what does it, does it have magical powers that you know of I feel My fire breath seems stronger now. Ah, I see. And then I'll get out my little pouch and I'll pull out this lead box. It's a rectangle box and I'll pull the lid off of it. She gave me this box. It was empty. I know not its use. And I will pull out a brand similar to my brand, but it has the serpent on the end instead of my symbol. This is what we used to brand ourselves. And then I'll pull out this metal cube. It's just metal cube with runes on it. Falzern, you immediately recognize this cube. And I have have no idea what this is. Well, Shakara, I certainly recognize that cube. You do? I do. And I reach into my bag of holding and pull out A cube of my own. An identical cube. Did Isabella give you that? No, no, uh, Shikara. I got this quite a while ago, and 
I'm not sure how the owner of it came across it. I don't know if it had anything to do with Isabella at all. But from what I understand, these cubes are integral to being able to approach those towers that emit the blue light. The Paladin's Towers. Yes. We actually, we need more of these cubes in order to be able to deal with them because, because from what I understand, as soon as you get close to these towers, you're overcome with some sort of, I don't know what it is, but if you're, if you possess one of these cubes, you're protected from this. And, and you need to go to the tower for Shaft's tower job. That's right. And, and I also... I don't have a lot of evidence to support this, but based on what the what's happening to the lands and the wildlife around these towers, I suspect the towers are, are a bad omen. I, I suspect the people who are erecting them or control of them are up to no good, so I've, I've agreed to help Shaft with this. Does that not prove that Dendar is good? That she gave me this cube that you need? Well... It, it, it certainly is convenient, a convenient coincidence, but I don't know that that's enough evidence to prove what Dendar's intents are. That is a good point. I myself, obviously, do not believe that I, I am evil. I, I know we haven't agreed on that point, but... Mayhaps it is not you that is evil, but some action that you will take has evil consequences. Unintentional. That could be. Uh, I mean, I I find myself in a difficult situation here in this alliance with Isabella, who, who I am beginning to believe is evil and, and up to no good, so... Mayhaps, through you, Isabella will cause evil that will destroy Aspara. That could be. It's certainly something to think on. I, do you know that Dendar has any power over you? She has not displayed so yet. Okay, well that's good, Dave. I would advise you to be very careful. Based on my experience with Isabella. Mayhaps sticking close to you would be enough to appease her. It could be. It could be. I don't know. Well, it seems you are stuck with me for the time being, then. I don't have any objections to that, Shakara. I, I think we can work together. That's all I've wanted. I am glad we have had this chance for this talk. Yes, as am I. I, I hope that, given time, we're able to trust each other more. I am sorry for my part in that. I don't blame, I don't blame you for your actions, Shakara. You were just acting on the information that you had. I shall retire for the evening, then. We have a big day ahead of us. Yes, yes, that's not a bad idea. I, I will step a little longer, but I, I also intend to get some good rest. Good night, then. Good night, Shakara. And Falzerin, in addition to these books, if you recall, you did take three uh, met metallic scroll cases. And... I imagine you probably want to inspect those too. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to, to try my best to identify those. Um, uh, well, look inside them and see if there are scrolls in them and then identify the scrolls. There are know. scrolls in them, absolutely. Each one of them does contain... You see three very high-level necromancy scroll, uh, scrolls. The first one you open is a spell called Enervation. It's a fifth-level spell. The second is Dance Macabre, fifth-level and the last being Soul Cage, a sixth level spell. Dance Macabre allows you to basically reanimate a large number of, of zombies or skeletons at once and control them. Enervation allowing you to drain energy from a, a targeted individual, bolstering yourself and sapping their life force. The Soul Cage literally as the name implies allows you to trap a soul temporarily in a cage and take advantage of it and exploit it uh, for varying abilities M mainly like boosts in combat like again can bolster yourself with with uh, vitality uh, etc 
And a, a quick kind of cursory look, at least, at some of the, the items, like the amulets you, you picked up, they don't seem to be magical in nature. And that one uh, bottle that had a stopper in it, is there anything in it, or is it empty? No, there's nothing in it. It was completely empty. I think I would probably like to uh, also just spend some time reviewing some books that I didn't get to read personally and make sure there's nothing that the others missed. Um, okay. And then I'll, I'll retire as well. So, like, in Pax and Worship, uh, you do come across the... the same passage that Shakar had shared with with you and basically what else is in here is uh, ba- uh, is like horror stories of patronage gone wrong and like uh, you know tales of a friend of a friend who tried to get out of a pact and was either killed or or flayed in some situations severely maimed because they tried to do so and you actually also see a passage kind of right at the end that does ma- does mention the ritual of, of catharsis and uh, basically it outlines an unsuccessful attempt at performing it and how it killed the the one trying to to perform it. Perfect. Great, great <laughs> news for Falzer. Yeah, it's real good news. It's all good news here. <laughs> yeah, I, I also. I think there's there's maybe some interesting stuff in the um, the one that me was reading, the Notable Beings of the Cosmos. I, I'll just kind of review what she al- already read about the Niyogi, and then um, I'd also like to take a look at the others as well, just so I have a cursory knowledge of, of this moving forward. Sure, sure. And like, you know, the Gods of Magnation is actually written in Celestial, which you don't understand. So, you know. Um, right. But yeah, you, you basically kind of get a lot of what was already outlined by those that were reading them and uh, now are reading it for yourself. Okay, perfect. And morning arrives. Everyone is finally fully rested. Did not expect all of that great role play. (laughs) Good job. Shaft, you made a choice early and you had to deal with it. (laughs) Yeah, sorry, buddy. So the morning morning comes, you're all well rested, and immediately upon waking, falls are probably waking up a little later than some of the others. A cutting feeling in your chest and your maximum hit point is drained by two more points and that's our show if you're not already be sure to follow us at incorrigible par on twitter incorrigible party on instagram and facebook and you can go to incorrigibleparty.com for world lore and pc information and we've recently started adding some maps there as well Incorrigible Party is generously sponsored and made possible by Critical Hit Design. For any of your design needs, visit criticalhitdesign.com. All ambient sound and music is provided by Tabletop Audio. And our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can reach him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring!